Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson and welcome to Microsoft Project Made Easy. Today we're going to be looking at a bunch of different tools and ways that you can get at the real detail of information that you want from Microsoft Project. If you've started a project and you've created a lot of information on it, like you've got your activities, you've created a critical path, well, if you've got all that data in this program, then you can actually organize it and really use it to your benefit. You might not be familiar with all the different things that you can do in this program. So I've got this project that I've created that I have a bunch of activities and summary tasks. You know what? You might have your own project. And if you're new to the channel, this is starting off that you have a certain basics of understanding. If you don't have that yet, you might want to click on, well, subscribe to my channel, click notifications, but you could also click on my channel and look at the playlists and you'll see I have a whole array of videos on Microsoft Project right from the beginning to the end. I'll leave a few of them in the description just so you can get a sense of things, um, but that's a good way to get going on Microsoft Project. But if you've been using it for a while and you want to find out how can I mine it for uh, information a little bit better, well, let's talk about that today. So I've got this project here, and just to go over a few things with you, uh, this project has a work breakdown structure, so it's got a different hierarchy. And of course, we can, under the View tab, and that's right here, we can go to Outline, and we can say Outline for Level 1, we just see the Level 1 task, Outline for Level 2, we just see the Level 2, and so on, right? So we can see differing levels of detail. And that can be helpful when you might have a project that has several hundred activities or maybe uh, more than a thousand activities. That can be helpful. Now, if I want to show everything underneath it, I can just say all subtasks and everything opens up. So that's great. Sometimes our summary tasks actually can get a little bit in the way of reviewing our project. Like sometimes we have stuff that's up here and we have stuff that's at the same dates down here. So like here and here and it's kind of far away from each other so it's not necessarily in order well maybe we'd like to review our project more like a waterfall like as things are occurring that sort of waterfall effect and to do that we might not want these summary tasks so we can also filter them out by just going to format and see over here summary tasks we can turn them on and turn them off so I just turn them off but I still don't have that complete waterfall effect that maybe I would like to see going through the project, right? So you can kind of see everything is right now organized by ID number um, and each activity has its own ID number. Well, what I can do is I can go to start and I can say sort earliest to latest. Now watch what happens. When I do that, now I kind of see how things are organized. Now you see it's all like a waterfall. Everything is flowing in organization as it will come up and you notice that my numbers they're a little bit skewed over here I got like 91 67 92 68 75 they're not in the same order anymore but they are in the order that they will come on my project which is kind of cool uh, given that I've already had all that information in it now what I would say to you if you do this kind of sorting it's good to remember that you did that because then I always get uh, students that are asking me, you know, how do, I, how do I get it back to the way it was? Okay, well, one of the ways that you could do this is always remember you can go to view and sort, all right? And we had it sorted by ID. So I'll sort by ID number. And now if you follow it, it's pretty much back to the way it was where we got things out of order, but they are ordered by ID. And then I can go to format and say, you know what? I want all those summary tasks back. They're still there. They're just hidden, right? And so now I've got my project back the way it was. So that's helpful to know. The other thing that a lot of people didn't know is you can sort it by various headings if you wanted to. So you can deselect everything. And then basically on new, t new township, right? It's got it under the various headings. So I could just show only construction if I wanted to, as an example, clicking on that. And so now all I will see is the construction tab headings. I won't see any of the other ones. Or I could go into further detail if I wanted to. I could click up here and I could say, you know what? I'll go select all, I'll deselect. And I'm going to say I only want to see the building systems activity. So anything that's under that heading of building systems and I click OK. 
Now I've only got things that are under my headings of building systems, right? And so that's clicked under that. That way I can see only those activities. Now, this is the nice thing. So I can filter things. Now, if I want to bring it back, I just say select all. So you've got that ability to adjust and to filter what you need to see. And that can be very helpful. Under the view tab, this is where there's a lot of stuff that you can filter for, right? So there, and you can highlight and you can group by. So these are interesting things. So to filter by, you can filter by critical tasks, right? So it'll show critical uh, tasks. So that's all I see on my product. You don't see any blue activities, right? So only the critical activities. Remember, critical activities are the activities that form the longest path through the project, right? So when we're looking at the network, they're not the activities that have float mixed in like the blue ones do here and there that you see. Okay, so I could filter by critical activities. Remember, it's filtering that information out. I could just show me the completed task. Well, in this case, it wouldn't show anything because I don't have anything done yet. I'll show you on a more advanced one in a minute. So I can filter by the date range, all right? And to filter by the date range, I pick a date range. And so that date range I am going to pick is gonna be, well, this project's starting a little bit later in uh, 2022. So I'm gonna pick a date range. Maybe I'll pick a date range like in February, 2023. So let's go there. So I'm gonna pick from the, uh, let's say, February 6th and then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna pick uh, so I'll take February 26th and I'm going to pick uh, maybe about five six weeks so we'll say uh, into April I'm gonna click OK and so that shows me the activities that are coming in that range so these are all the activities that are gonna come during that time period for this particular project. And that's great. So I can look at what's coming up during that time period. And if I'm going to detail out a uh, look ahead schedule, I know that these are gonna be coming up and then I can work on getting more detail on it, which is helpful in selecting parts and portions of my project. Cause I probably, at certain times, I don't wanna be looking at something that's way, way out into the future. I want to detailing what's coming up so I can really flush that information out. So that's helpful if I have that. And I can do that every time I do my look ahead schedule. I can also do that when I'm updating the schedule for a particular period of time. Then I could just look at what's coming up. Okay, so other things that are very useful in here as uh, well are milestones. So milestones, I can just say, okay, I just want to see the milestones. And right now I've got the headings. If I only wanted the milestones, remember, I can just shut off the summary tasks and now I just see these milestones. And so this is kind of cool because I can highlight these and I can right click and I can go add to timeline. So now I have all of these activities on the timeline with all of the milestones in place and I can visually see them coming up and that can, I can leave that on my actual screen so I can work at trying to achieve those milestone dates and that can be really helpful in setting things up that way so I've got the milestones now you have to remember you will go to view you have to go no filter and now you bring it back you go to format and then you can bring back your summary tasks so it's a step-by-step -step process of filtering the other nice thing with view is you can group by so group by active versus inactive activities. Uh, that would be if you make some activities active or inactive, uh, you can um, group them by that way of doing it. So I can go inactivate task. And so inactivating tasks kind of means that they're not part of the project right now. Uh, so they're not part of that uh, activity list. They've got a cross in it. Maybe you got another one here that's on the critical path. And when you make that inactive, it reschedules things, assuming that's not part of the project, but it leaves it there. If you wanted to filter so you could see both of them at the same time, 
or, or the active uh, uh, activities, not filter, but group by, then you can see both of them. When you filter, you can't see both of them. And so now you can see the active and uh, the ones that aren't active and the ones that are active. So that separates them out for that purpose. That can be quite helpful if you're not sure something's gonna happen, but you wanted to have it in play, that you could bring it to life at any point, you can basically reactivate those inactive tasks. And if you wanted to reactivate all of them, then if you group them, then you could always reactivate them that way, and then you're sure you're not missing any. So that's a very helpful method uh, to utilize uh, that way as well. You can group also by uh, milestones. I said that, so you, that would just separate the milestones uh, and have them all listed there so you can quickly see them at the top of the screen. If you wanted to see them at the top of the screen for that, that particular method, that's possible as well. And so that makes it easier. I'm gonna go no group here and then I've got them all listed that way. And now it's a clear screen back to the beginning. So this tool here is very, very helpful for you for doing those particular items. Highlight is similar, it's just that it just highlights those ones so that they stand out. So for example, if I made these activities here uh, inactive and I said to highlight um, the active ones, it's gonna make all the active ones highlighted on all these ones not highlighted, right? So you can sort of see how that works in that way. I don't know if you'd really want to use that particular one, but it's it's another way of looking at things from that perspective. I'll highlight these again, and I'll make them active again. Uh, so there you go, nice little uh, tool there. Another thing you can do is under the format, you can go to textiles, and you can actually color the activity. So if you want a critical task to have the text perhaps in red, and maybe you want it in bold. Well, let's just make it red. How's that? All right. Because if you wanted to, you could also make it uh, bold or whatever method you know you wanted. Like I could just make it bold there. But this way, you see all the critical tasks in red. Some people like to do that. Not sure that I'm a little bit colorblind, so it's maybe not my biggest thing. But uh, again, I could go to critical tasks. And I could say, I just want automatic color and click OK, and that'll make, bring it back to the way it was. The other point I wanted to also bring to you is if you've actually updated your project, you can, I'm gonna switch windows to one where I've updated it. So in this project, I've actually updated it. I kind of customized on the top that I put uh, the summary tasks for the project so that they could be a little bit more visible and the milestones are listed there at the bottom so you can see them you know you can pull this right down and see everything uh, if you're wanting to see that information by the way on this timeliner box you can squeeze stuff by just pulling it and you can see how it does the time scale below but for now just I wanted to point out in this particular screen I've updated some of the activities I'll just move that squeeze that a little bit I've updated a bunch of the activities. So that means I could also filter for uh, completed tasks. Just want to see the completed ones. So it'll show me just the completed ones. Uh, no filter. I could filter it for uh, the, um, uh, the ones that are status. All right, so this is kind of cool too. Status, if I go status, it's got three categories, complete, on schedule and you could think of that as being activities that are started but not finished and future tasks that still have to be done this is almost like a kanban in a lot of ways in that you got the complete tasks you've got the tasks that are in progress and you've got the tasks that are coming up and so if you've ever used uh, the program like trello and it's got like a kanban board kanban comes out of the toyota production system uh, is very helpful in lean practices. Uh, you can sort of get that sense on this. There's a little bit more advanced ways that we can do that, but this is a kind of quick uh, way of getting um, that listing there. And so again, I'll just go to status and say no group, and that just gets rid of the grouping. Key to all of this is to remember you've filtered something so that you don't get all stuck and you wonder what happened to your headings, your summary tasks, or certain activities have disappeared from your screen. 
so to make a conscious effort if you're filtering make sure you also know how to unfilter no filter no highlight right or in the case of uh, sorting if you've sorted by start date or something you want to resort it by ID you've got these choices in here of course you've got you will see if you've sorted a certain way you'll typically see that you've filtered information out and it'll usually show like a funnel along here so that's another good indicator for you to see things and of course to bring back the summary task list you can just click over here and that will make it disappear or make it visible which is very useful for really looking at that waterfall effect that I mentioned earlier so that's the quick that I wanted to sort of show you how you can dive in and get a little bit of filtering and mining of that information in place that can be quite helpful for you uh, once you've set up your projects really really helpful because all the data is there it's really easy to do uh, and you just have to practice it on your own projects is what I would suggest you know if you're worried about it do a file save as save under a different name and play around with doing the different filters and finding filters that actually work well for you so I'm Tom Stevenson. I uh, hope you enjoyed this episode of Microsoft Pro Project Made Easy. Don't forget to click the subscribe icon, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.